Uh, Ant has joined the show today. It's the yeah. Ron and Anthony show. Fez has been traded Aww. to Opie. And uh, I think it's I think it's a good trade for both teams. For any uh, have there been any future prospects or anything also? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Along, like, East uh, Side Dave to be named later. <laughs> <East Side Dave. laughs> the name that will never go away. What do you What do you uh, What are you up to today? Ed? Uh, well, I'm waiting for my uh, luxury vehicle to whisk me away yeah. to Atlantic City. Whoa. I got some. Uh, I got some uh, gambling. I usually need a reason to go there, like Jimmy's doing a show or something yeah. like that. I rarely just go to a casino. So my cousin called me, and he's uh, in his early twenties. And him and his buddies were like, "Andy, can you hook me up? Uh, we want to go to you know they're working guys from right. Long Island. Want to go to Atlantic City? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up. So I call my guy. I get him a suite at the Water Club and stuff. And then I start thinking, I'm like, do I really want them completely unsupervised mm. on my dime? In Atlantic City, the answer was no. Right. And these are the kids that you will be hating by Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Because well, they will have no respect for anything. I got two suites. One for me, one for them. Right. So uh, I don't have to be in the same room with them because they, like right? they like their marijuana. Sure. They like uh, their uh, staying up very late. And I like going to the casino and uh, gambling. It's gambling straight through. You don't need any outside I stuff. I don't get up. I, I try to use my internal clock to even tell what time it is in that windowless dungeon mm -hmm. that is a casino. And uh, then when I feel like it or I'm nodding off at the table, I uh, go back to the room. So what? how much time do you feel like you need to get over at the tables? How much? <sighs> you know? I've done 17 hours, 18 hours straight, uh, depending on how I'm doing. Um, if I'm losing, I'll get kind of pissed off and then maybe go play some poker, mm -hmm. but blackjack's my game. But if I'm on a roll and, uh, I've go, I will go for whew, like 17, 18 hours. Now, straight. if you turn cold, do you get up and go though? Or you just work your way through it? Never soon enough there, Ronnie. Yeah. Never get <laughs> up soon enough That's when it turns cold because you know why? It's bound to turn hot again real yeah, quick. Right. Real soon. I'm Probably when you're upstairs laying down thinking, <laughs> now I feel hot. The lady luck came yeah. in when I left the table. If I would have just stuck around, I stuck around longer. See, that's the that's the the genius of putting the hotel rooms in the casino. Because <laughs> you're up there, you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? I might as well be in Akron now I'm in my room. <laughs> yeah, there's get money, out of here. There's money to be made <laughs> down yeah. there, and I'm up here. Watching Discovery. You know when like, you're in Vegas, like when you're saying to the prostitute, hurry, 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 hurry. Let's go. Let's go. You're lagging. Because all you're thinking <laughs> yeah. is the green you could be making downstairs. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm going to uh, do the weekend uh, down there. So I'm just waiting for my car. I figured I'd uh, come and say hi. And... Uh, I also wanted to discuss something with sure, you, Mr. Bennington. I, d I was talking about on the show today. You are uh, amazing on the air. I, I, I can't say enough about you. Um, you. You're an amazing interviewer with the mm. guests. And yesterday you had Tim on. Tim Heidecker. Tim and Eric, right? Uh, I've watched the Tim and Eric billion dollar movie. How did you enjoy that? Uh, yeah. it, was, uh, it, was, it was film. Yeah, um, and, and then yesterday you, you were talking about a, a total different, a totally different project that Tim had. Yeah, he didn't write it or direct it. I hear. No, he did not. It's okay. called the comedy. Yeah, so I was thinking um, with you interviewing him yeah. that I would watch it because it was it sounded compelling. You had said you watched it twice. Twice. Be, well, I got the screener uh -huh. and I had to interview him, and I watched him the first time, and I'm like, I hate. Him and all of his friends. <laughs> but why do I hate them so much? Uh -huh. So I watched it again. And then as he came in, I said, I still don't know how I feel about your film. Now, I heard the whole interview, and I heard yeah. you say that. I'm still not sure how I feel about the film. I've had movies that I've watched and felt the same way. And they are amongst some of my favorite movies. Because the movie ends... And you're thinking about it. You're online. You're trying to get right. other people's opinions of what this meant and that. Right. And I know you as a, a very reasonable man. You're very intelligent. Mm -hmm. So to watch a movie twice, I'm just thinking it was probably one of those things where you're like, it was so deep, even Ronnie had to plow through it two times. So it's got to be good, compelling, mm -hmm. interesting. So I go home. I, I barely get my backpack on the chair. I'm rushing for the remote control and finding the comedy. And uh, lo and behold, there it is on demand. I, I order it, and I start watching. It starts off with that weird, <laughs> nude... Fez Watley <laughs> fucking dance party. Yeah, there's some very uh, homoerotic stuff going on in slow motion at a party with guys pouring beer on each other, hugging. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's part yeah. of the movie. I understand. 
I don't know when I finally realized, oh my God, I'm the Mark. And on the midway. You're on the midway. <laughs> and, and Ronnie, as the carny, pulled me right in well, with here's promise the th- of adventure. Here's the thing about the movie. It's basically somewhat wealthy white kids who uh-huh. don't care about anything. Didn't get their money by working yeah. either. And fucking with minorities. Yeah. And, and the thing that got to me about that is, A, uh, have I acted like that? In the mm-hmm. past, which I'm sure I have, I've been fucking cruel to people that Blatant, didn't deserve it. Yeah, like when I was face. younger. Uh, but was there any personal growth for the characters in this movie? And the answer would be no, <laughs> no. zero. But I also <laughs> took it up. This is what an Adam Sandler film would be like if he acted like that in real life. It's yes. not funny. It's not fucking amusing. It's not you're endearing. Fucking, it's not cute. You're just a fucking pig. So. <laughs> the point would be, all the movies that we do watch are bullshit. Yeah, yeah. They're just bullshit. Because that's how an Adam Sandler character would be treated in real life. Right. That's what the reaction wouldn't be, giggling or, yeah. oh gosh, you. It would be, this guy's a fucking asshole. Right, but uh, I'm at the point in my life now that when like teen boys come somewhere, I'm just like, hey, hey. Come that shit down. I'm not fucking playing with you. I don't know who they are, but I know they've been misraised, and I don't want to put... I just feel and like they take up too much room. The thing about this film is that they were in their 30s. Yeah. And there are plenty of people in their 30s now who fucking... I don't know whether they refuse to grow up or just don't know how to grow up. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're th- babies. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's because of uh, the environment we live in these days, the parenting or lack thereof that goes on. And this just sounds like old person talking. It is old it's people talking, isn't it? Because they did say the same thing when when I was growing up. I uh, but were, were you an awful kid? Like to... no, I was very sweet. Yeah. I was a nice boy. I was very mindful of my yeah. parents. I was listening. We were listening just yesterday to some um, kid playing Xbox. Uh, with his mother in the room, and he's screaming at her, get me the, some fucking hot chocolate. And right. it was serious. She's going, get off that thing. He's like, no, ma, I'm, I gotta do this. Ma. And he's like, you said you'd get me fucking hot chocolate, you bitch. And I was thinking back, if I came within 20 miles of saying something like mm-hmm. that growing up, not a, a time out, mind you. Right. <laughs> a fist. <laughs> a legitimate, hairy-knuckled, blistered, And that was from your mom. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But right see, in the we, face. we didn't know. We had abusive parents. Our parents were abusive. Abusive, yes. Yeah. yes. And that's why we... See, I had two distinct personalities. One at home yes. and one on the street. Never the twain shall meet. Yeah, never. No. Never mix those world, worlds. So when I went out on the street, I was fucking awful. But when I came home, very respectful. Very nice. Yeah. Yes, respectful. I I, I remember I was uh, singing some celebrate. This is celebrate, yeah. <laughs> celebrate. And I was uh, I just heard the word masturbate yeah. Uh, in school or something, and I was singing "Masturbate, Masturbate." See, I, I knew where my calling would be, song parody, <laughs> sure. uh, even at that tender age. And my father came in and just whacked me in the face. Don't say that word. And then I wasn't even sure which word. Right? <laughs> like, was it dance to the music? He didn't in, want me saying that. In first grade, I got in trouble for. I came home and I said the fuzz was at our school today. <laughs> wow, man! <laughs> <laughs> because I had heard it in school. My dad was across the table in a heartbeat. Because he said the fuzz. The, the fuzz. Never disrespected. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Right, now I fucking get it. You're with them. Yeah, yeah. All right. I thought we were a family. I thought we were. Were they the oversensitive? Because again, I remember driving with my dad and. Uh, there was a, um, a, a song came on, um, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. And it was like, when I look back on all the crap <laughs> I learned in high yeah. school. And he looked at the radio and was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and just shut it off. He's like, I don't like that language in, in songs. Right. In songs. Really? <laughs> Meanwhile, at home, he's telling my mother, right. you fucking bitch. <laughs> you motherfucker. Like, yeah, I don't like that language in my upbringing. Could you, that- could you help me out? <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, uh, in my neighborhood, the only kind of uh, profanity would that be okay would be racial. Other, <laughs> <laughs> that they got a wide berth on. Right, that's yes. fine. But beyond that, no, you can't do it. But there was the, the terrorizing that we did to some of the older people in the neighborhood. There was some guy that liked his lawn so much that we just called him Mr. Bush. <laughs> 
<laughs> and every day we'd go by, yank his fucking bush, walking home from school, so he would come in out and, and yell at us in German. You know, it was just fucking oh, fantastic. To he us. was just trying to hide out from <laughs> yeah. you know, the JDL. <laughs> he just wanted his bush. Why did we think it was something to fuck with? Yeah, you, yeah. You, you you just did those things. It was Lord of the Flies yeah. back then. There was real no super, really no supervision. You don't really even see kids out playing in no. this day and age. Groups of kids just doing things. Everything is hidden away or indoors for this fear of molestation or getting yeah. in trouble or lawsuits. Uh, so I don't even know what, what goes on in this day. They don't go, as we would say, into the woods. Right, Mom, right. I was just in the woods. <laughs> and that was considered acceptable yeah. to leave on a summer's day, leave in the morning, go into the woods, and then be home for dinner. Right. An entire day spent in the woods. <laughs> now there would be fucking helicopters looking oh, for those yeah. kids. Police combing the area. Yeah. That or, of course, going into the new houses and stealing lumber and nails. To make a tree yeah. fort. And so, yeah, 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 because yeah. of the new development that was coming in. New development. Those woods you played in, they're yeah. gone now. They made houses. And, you, you, yeah, you just walked in the front door and there was building materials, <laughs> yeah. plywood. And no, you, you... The thing is, we did take that to make forts, but these were the, the worst constructed things oh, yes. that has ever happened. I don't know why we just, there was no angles to it. It was just <laughs> nailed on. Ne just never, <laughs> never any architecture no. or, or forethought no, before not. you started the building process. <laughs> and when you think about it, these were elevated <laughs> yeah, in the air train. where it was dangerous if they fell down. Right. Yet it was just like, nah, you put a couple of two by four. Yeah. yeah. Using then, roofing shingle nails, then you would, cement nails. There was anything. always nails sticking out, so if you <laughs> yeah. got too close to it. You'd, but the other thing, too, is like we would put a candle in there and then pass a cigarette around. <laughs> of course. This is fucking great. Yeah. This is our place. Yeah. This is our place. <laughs> all right. So no one comes up to look at the Playboy magazine unless yes. we're all here. Because <laughs> any stock that you had of magazines yeah. was a, a fucking treasure. That was like trade. Right. We, and, we, our economy as teens and right. early adolescents <laughs> was based on the uh, Playboy magazine. It was uh, the, 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 por the porno standard right. we were on. Yeah. Any type of... If you got one of those magazines with like the heavy stock pages, the yeah. thick color pages of really despicable stuff, <laughs> right? Oh, was that uh, that was like a thousand dollar bill? Because if somebody said, "Did did you get Bush in it? Does is there Bush? Is there Bush? <laughs> That's what you were looking. Because yeah. it wasn't Playboy and yeah. their fucking classy way of doing it. Playboy, even though it was classy early on, was fucking instant boner. Oh, it sure. It was just an amazing thing to lay your eyes on. Uh, and then when you started seeing things like Hustler, forget about that. Initially, yeah, that was, yeah. frightening. Yeah, very frightening. <laughs> then it turned into erotic. But initially, <laughs> what the? F but when you're like in your, this is the weird thing. When you're in the elementary years and you're just starting to look at this, a you don't quite know what you're looking at. Yeah. B. God forbid you should ask your friends. There's no shared information. No. There's just a bunch of people who act like they know it. So first, I assumed. Yes, the woman gets naked. I put on a tuxedo and I sit next to her. I can do this. I can do this. Then right. in my mind, I remember thinking that sucking a tit was fucking. And I gave that ah. some thought and I go, that's done. Okay, that's, that's done. I'm ready for adulthood. When I actually saw penetration, I'm like, what Whoa. the fuck is going down? Right? Here? We're pissing in them? That's where, <laughs> that's how sick our in species so, in is? In some cases, yes. <laughs> It yeah, was so confusing. That confusing portion of life. I, I do recall my first actual girl-boy experience was with a girl that lived down the street from me in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And we used to show each other our heinies. Right, so heinies we, big. We would go into the shed in the back and pull our pants down and not even care about the front. Like, I didn't care at all about the front. She would turn around all and look over her shoulder and show me her ass, and I yeah. would do the same thing. And we would just be standing there like two hummels, <laughs> like two little Christmas hummels, uh, looking over each other, our shoulders at each other's heinies. And like you said, when you started getting this mixed... Uh, bundle of what it really was. Right, when it mixed comes together. With, with the shit you didn't know, mixed with shit your brother told you that he didn't know. I assumed 
first that sex was in the ass. <laughs> right. When I thought about penetration. Then I thought you needed a scumbag to get a girl pregnant because it had the scum in it. Oh, I was thought it there. was the scumbag. So as, as long as you don't use that, you're safe. Then you're safe as long as you're not. And I still adhere to that today. It's yeah. affected me to this day. Where I cannot wear those deplorable things for fear of getting a girl pregnant. <laughs> but yeah, that confusion portion of life is very funny when you look back on it. At the time, petrifying. We uh, It was this thing of doctor that was being played in my neighborhood. And one of my friends put a stick in oh, oh. another little girl's ass oh, as we're doing Jesus. this. And that called all the parents in. That was the and big, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> make sure they don't find out about the garden hose enema. <laughs> Please, if that fucking comes up. But the, when they call you in, because we've heard you've been doing Oof. this, and they're treating you like you're some kind of aggressor when you're just right. a little kid yourself. Yeah, they, they fuck you up. They're treating it like that fucking movie with the pinball machine. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, it it is an odd thing that like is that just kids like you said playing doctor yeah. or is there something that eventually will turn into a a sex criminal? Well, the thing is, you have to. The person who thought of it was probably abused. I didn't think okay. of that at the time. Right. But the little boy who came out with the stick, where was his fucking head at? What did he? And I think? was just like, yeah, all right, fucking hit it up. You know, this is You're it. Just this is where we're crowd. at now. It's like start, anything else. This is starting to roll now. I got it. <laughs> Take oh, the stick man. to her. So, uh, you know, in hindsight, I thought did something happen there? Yeah, Did, yeah, you know, and then the adults would ask, "Was anybody laying on top of each other?" And you're like, "What? What is that?" You guys <laughs> I'm are really stupid. fucking confused now. Why would we do that, dummy? No, <laughs> of course not. Yeah, so that's why that's... I think that you should enjoy that movie more, the comedy. Yeah, maybe I should. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> You didn't think it was funny, though, when he went into the all-black bar and acted like, well, I'm going to start bringing a lot of my friends in here and making this thing fucking pop. Yeah, I did find some moments to be funny yeah. in it. But on the whole, maybe I got to watch it twice like you did. My point about that is, and I was my intern lives in Bed-Stuy. And he comes from a generation that grew up with no fear of black people uh -huh. and no understanding boundaries. Where I came from, the white neighborhood, that if a black guy walked through, attacked if we walked through their neighborhood right. attacked and we were honestly just on the other side of the tracks from each other yeah so we didn't mix but out of respect not out of you know we don't want to be with those people but like hey everybody's got to have their own this is our place that's yours yeah. now black people have been pushed out of these neighborhoods in brooklyn that they lived for generations. Because now they're nice hipster areas. Is that yeah. what's going on? Yeah. As soon as the hipsters move in, because they're like, hey, it's great to be here. I don't mind. You know, everything's great. And then the rents go up, and all of a sudden, the hip places, you know, coffee shops and bars open up, and black people end up moving. Isn't that great that that's the way to get black people out of areas is just... <laughs> Build things. If what well, the hell? How does that work? Well, because the rents go up amazingly, and this is the exact reason that your parents left. You know the city. You know yes. generations white ago. White flight. Well, yeah, that white flight. Now it's now the city has a certain amount of black flight mm. to it. And the older uh, black relatives talk about, I remember when that was a black neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could walk around the streets without seeing a guy wearing a, a mask and snorkel and a backpack. Well, the, uh, they, they owned brownstones in Brooklyn at one time that now go for seven, eight million dollars. And it's the same houses. I bet the, the same inside exact house. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Well, they yeah. got the extra the figure. Bat. Yeah, the bathroom yeah. works. Done a little <laughs> <laughs> it's done a little work, perhaps. But the same thing is very weird. Is happening in Harlem. When you go up yeah. in Harlem now, it's a, at least the third white. The Harlem Renaissance, yeah. the second Renaissance. Yeah, where uh, but, you see like new buildings going up, yeah. and the old buildings are being refurbished. Uh, but the black people are disappearing. They from are Harlem. disappearing in, in Harlem, which is no one ever saw coming. No. no one ever, you know, at one point they were like, can we ever take back, you know, the village? But no one ever thought, and then we'll move on into Harlem. This is like a very slow, easier Hitler. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if Hitler really would have thought about gentrification, all of his dreams would have came true. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I didn't where where are the black people going? That I think is the suburbs now. Yeah. That they're going to just uh move into the suburbs. Hmm. 
And then you'll be like, oh, fuck, I was in the suburbs at night last night. It was so scary. <laughs> Frightening, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, was in, I was in Deer Park out on Long Island. <laughs> Oof, look out. That's a tough neighborhood. It's very strange, though. Yeah. It is a very strange uh, phenomenon. And one no one saw coming. No, no. Uh, just simply uh, refurbishing the, the area and jacking up the rent. Well, you remember, like, New York... Any part of New York mm -hmm. was a frightening place. Any any video of New York or film from the 70s will show you what New York was all about and yeah. the fear it struck into kids. When we used to take field trips to the Museum of Natural History from Long Island, uh, the second we got through the tunnel and came out of the tunnel, it was like... We were in a, a, a safari bus looking out at something so scary on the drive. I couldn't imagine. Uh, I used to actually imagine what if I was lost in the city and it would scare the shit out of me. Scare the living shit out of me. The beginning of the million dollar movie here in New York. They used to play and show this fountain at night with people walking around New York City shots. And it would scare the piss out of me as a kid. And I was sitting home. In the Sitting suburbs. home and like that could Safe. happen. I'm like, what if I was lost there? Ah! <laughs> Start crying. <laughs> and every city was like that. Chicago yeah. was like that. Atlanta was like that. Philly was like that. And now every place is like a pretty uh, expensive. Yeah. And overly safe so safe that people actually get bored with it yep you know yep. it's it's a little bit boring for people now any new york film where you see a chock full of nuts coffee in the background you know mm -hmm. you know there's some grit going on the opening sequence of the odd couple scared me because they just showed <laughs> those buses those loud everything bah, 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 big puffs of black smoke now everything's ecologically uh, they got the propane buses and Nothing's uh, yeah. I'd be like ah, the city. The uh, scary and the, song. The way yes. that the the way that the whores would just grab at you on the yeah. street. And the thing that movies lie about is acting like that. There's somehow that the whores were fuckable because <laughs> they you would under no circumstances have any sex with a woman that could whip your ass. Right. But and yet they would grab and pull at you. You can have a chick with you, and they're like. Where are you going? You're like, please, just yeah. let me walk through here. I want to get buy you into the crack dealers. That's yeah. all I want to do. <laughs> People would sell rock on the street 15 feet away from a cop. They wouldn't care. Feet. The cop wouldn't care. Yeah. No one cared. What was the cop going to do? A three-card Monty. And this isn't that oh, long ago. No, vividly remember this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking two decades ago. No. And that was what it's like. Now the hard rock is exactly... <laughs> In those spots, yeah. and yeah. you get there, and you might as well be in Orlando. Yeah, where they were just triple X, all every, every theater, triple X, all over the marquee. Now, you, you, where do you go to see a friggin' uh, porno? <laughs> but seriously, did you ever walk <laughs> into the, any of those places? I wouldn't have fucking dreamt uh, of no, walking in there. You no. did? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it would just uh, to me, it would seem like I want to be raped by fucking... <laughs> <laughs> we, used, we used to go in when we were like 17. We, you know, we drive into the city from Jersey. And this is, so I'm 40, so it's not that long ago. Yeah. And we'd go in and we'd go into the little things where you put the quarters and then I the couldn't. little window would... And they, there'd be like three or four girls in there. Sandy Kane at one point, I'm sure, was in Ugh. it. And that's what they all look like. But we were 17. We're like, this is the greatest thing ever. Look, it's tits. But you're you know, waiting to be fucking mugged. Yes. I I'm not going to walk up those mugged. steps. I'm not going to no. fucking do it. I always thought I was going to get mugged or, or yeah, victim of something because I just look like a suburban idiot coming into the, uh, the vicious city. Uh, I was in Times Square one time. It was like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And this is... Probably late 80s. Yeah. No planters and, and pedestrian <laughs> malls back then. No. The people, whatever the color was, it wasn't white or black. <laughs> it was some strange third world mixed up thing. And there was a million people of no race that I could even <laughs> make out. And it, it, it fucking was the strangest looking thing I ever, and I, I'm like, I don't know where I am because these people don't even look like Bangkok. I can't throw <laughs> out a name that I can relate to. Yeah. But it's like Blade Runner, but scarier. Yeah. Like if Blade Runner was even scarier. <laughs> You just never saw it coming back then either. The, no. This change, you never thought it could change. When you were on the West Side, 
Yeah. That was like by the Javits Center where yeah. all the prostitutes oh, used yeah. to be. And it was just all the – so much crime and shenanigans went on back there. And now, you know, the West Side Highway with the nice median strip and the trees and the <laughs> – it's yeah. it's amazing that they were actually able to turn that around. Well, a, a big part of it is that everyone who lived there, thanks to crack and AIDS, is dead. <laughs> so, thanks. you know, people put down crack and they put down AIDS, yeah. but it was very helpful. We are weeding out. Kind of, yeah. It was yeah. almost like a weed killer yeah. that went through. But there, but but because of that, there's a lot less creativity. In the Do you city. Think, yeah, there's got to be a bad side to that. Well, and the the bad side would be Guy Fieri's fucking house of <laughs> whatever that thing is. <laughs> that somebody could think to themselves, I'm going to open up a 500 seat place, 500 seat, and restaurant. then tourists are going to get go into it despite scathing reviews from everywhere. Hey, I had his Big Dipper uh, beef dip uh, today <laughs> right here it? on the show. It was pretty good. Well, did he come it. in? No, he was oh. on the phone though. Oh, we caught we on the phone, so we weren't able to get his whole rock and roll atmosphere <laughs> attitude. I'm cooking. I bet he's got a pepper mill with flames on it. <laughs> Woo! Look at that! I'm putting some pepper on here. Rock and roll. <laughs> Woo! Well, here's the thing. I saw him on the Today Show, and he goes, "The reviews were so." Well, here's the thing. I saw him on the Today Show, and he goes, "The reviews were so bad that he hopped in the plane and took the red eye back." And I'm like, "What chef would open up a restaurant?" In New York City and not almost live there, <laughs> let alone, and I'm talking about a chef who would have a 75 seat place, let alone a 500 seat fucking place, and then be on the other side of the country. Yeah, he said his team is there, so it's okay. Oh, that's good. His team. So a lot of times, like, you and Ope think, if you send your team in to do the show... <laughs> that's a poor example, because we've done that many, many times. <laughs> Our team has come in. Uh, there's literally, literally no I in team, because I'm not here when the team is on. I'd rather be home playing uh, Xbox. <laughs> yeah, you, and you're, just, you're telling the boss, yeah, it sounded pretty good. I had some of it on. <laughs> Seemed like they were really rugged. Like, Sam is really coming into his own. Sam is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> great little talent there. I think uh, one day, yeah, it'll be pretty good. Uh, I'm going to be home. That is the American thing of, I think it's okay. I think it's done. Good Whatever. enough. Yeah, it's good enough. It's Good fine. enough. You just got to be. I think that was from um, Office Space. It's like you, you got to do just enough work to keep your job. Why would you do more? That's how. So uh, you just work just hard enough where you're not, you're, you know, not getting yourself in trouble. Right. And that's it. That's all I got to do. Well, my family, the, the bar was always stay out of jail. And that <laughs> right, would be that's like, another good one. he's doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he leaves here in the morning. He does something. He comes, he over comes home. <laughs> Everything is great. No phone calls. And if you could do that, that's basically pass is what I was looking for in school. Nothing yeah. higher. Nothing at all. Oh, higher. yeah. Pass. If I, if I pass, if I got C's, I was ecstatic. I still don't even see the difference between a C and an A. Nothing. Nope. Actually, a D is it's, still yeah, passing. Passing. No one is judging what you do now based on that. <laughs> I'd like to see your report card, please. From, yeah. You know, no, it doesn't work. I, I was talking earlier today yeah. on the show that uh, I, I obviously didn't graduate high school because I, I cut a lot of the classes. But I was like, why didn't I graduate? But everyone I was cutting with... They graduated. Right. Then I realized I was every period cutting, <laughs> and it was a whole different group every period that was cutting. So they, one class, me, every class. And nobody really busted at you too much on the leaving class, right? I mean, no. I was the same way. No. I did not have a school that cared about that. Friday, I would go in, collect yeah. for the kegger. Uh, <laughs> it's happening, yeah, yeah. dudes. It's all happening. Yep. And But other than that, they still, for whatever reason, passed. Did you, I've never done a report in my life or homework. I, I never no idea. figured out how people graduated like that. Because I did the same thing. Nothing. Right. But they wouldn't let me through. They did not let me through. Bastards. Yeah, I didn't have any problem with it. Although, like in my grade point average, I was below two retards. There was two <laughs> actually retards. And I'm not even making it up. There was two retarded kids that had a fucking higher grade point, but oh, I felt about no. it the same as you. Like, yeah, isn't yeah. that fucking funny? Whatever. A retard beat me. Yeah. That's great. A retard beat me. I mean, the kid had a fucking super small head. There was something... <laughs> <laughs> fucking, it wasn't just mental, but he was physically deformed as well. But why worry? Yeah, yeah. But they yeah. didn't let, you had to sit there the night that all your, 
your friends put on their caps uh, and gowns. Yeah, by that point, I hadn't even. I didn't even care about that. It wasn't yeah. like the last minute I found out I'm not graduating. I knew pretty early in the year yeah. that there wasn't even a hope. You know, they're like, "Well, you need this, this, this." I'm like, "I'm not gonna." I knew myself. Like, right. I'm not gonna <laughs> buckle down now. <laughs> and uh, you gotta buckle down, Anthony. <laughs> You gotta buckle down and come into class. Why don't you attend? Yeah. Just attend the class. And then and then for a week I'd have the books and I'd go <laughs> right. and and then and then it started turning into like you got a piece of paper and a pen? Because I wouldn't bring my books. And then it just kinda like I, I was walking to class and I'd be like, I'd rather smoke a joint outside. It is better. Yeah, it's so funner much better. and you got the radio. That's great. I was taking my car when when once I got a car, it was yeah. all over. Pizza place. Why would I be at school when I could be at the pizza place? We used to spend a lot of time getting high and driving around this place called Beaver Valley where rich people lived. Look at their houses and basically it was like house hunters where we were camping. <laughs> You're like, you know what? I'd never have the fucking maid quarters. I'm not going to do that. I'd never put a maid quarters so close to the house. Yeah. You know, like we were like crazy about. I bet one day something will happen and I'll live here. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> I just, I'm going to go for it, you know? <laughs> going to fucking go for it. And I don't know what they would, must have thought of. Well, we would pull up in their fucking driveway, look around. Okay. God, it must look like Charlie Manson. Case in the joint. Yeah. 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 But it, what, you, you'd have these delusions of grandeur just kind of like, yeah. Because they told day. you you can make anything out of yourself. Day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it actually happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess not graduating and well, watching everybody TV. Everybody else smoking who pot. buckled down, they're still buckling down. Uh yes, yeah, still still trying yeah. to put it all together. Buckle down. Are you checking schooling. on your car? I'm checking on my car uh, right here on uh, Keith. Um Keith the cop is uh, yeah. arranging the car. But yeah, I should probably head downstairs. Uh yeah, Atlantic City. Here I come. Atlantic City. Fred and Barney, Doc's a plumber. <laughs> I can only do fake, fake Fred. That hey, was good. Hey, Barney. <laughs> the second Fred? The second Fred sucked. Yeah. That, hey, you know, Barney. You know what that Fred, I called him Click. Because I <laughs> yes. fucking wanted no part of that Nothing. shit. Nothing. That guy None of that. stunk. None of that. Yes. Alan Reed was the real Fred. Yeah, he, he was a fucking ass. major talent. And yeah. to me, that should have just ended cartoons. You know what I mean? Like, you peak, yes. it's done. Yeah. And the Nemo, I don't want to see. No, nope. I just put the, on the stones. Old classic uh, Warner Brothers cartoons and yeah. the uh, Flintstones. You couldn't beat them. Man. No, I say Flintstones and Rolling Stones, and then why even <laughs> That's go it. on from there? Right there, You're I done. am Rock Quarry. That's good stuff. Hmm. Gus Schultz. That's <laughs> it. I'll be a gas station attendant. Fucking great stuff. Sure, you try to explain that to the kids now. You're like, you don't understand. The dinosaur was washing the dishes. Okay? Uh, and they always, fucking yeah. somehow hypnotized him to stay there and wait for the dishes to but be washed. But he knew it sucked because he'd always look up and go, mm, it's a living. Yeah, right. You right. know, so even he knew it stunk. Right. The record player bird would always say, finally, my kind of music. <laughs> Not the bug music. <laughs> the bug music. Bug music. <laughs> uh, oh, those were the days, yeah. right? The kids today, they the, don't know. The kids today with their Atari machines. <laughs> <laughs> ah, blast it. Get some fresh air. Go to the woods. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, All right, my uh, friend. lady, um, have fun. Okay. What a pleasure sitting in Always with, uh, good. with you guys. Always always a treat. Uh, well, you look fantastic there, you, sir, rock and roll. You. Thank you, thank you. Uh, looking good, of course, mm -hmm. uh, HT. Mm -hmm. Uh, very good seeing you again. And uh, my goodness. Well, let me know again. when uh, Opie has strep throat, and I'll come in and do your and show. And do my show. <laughs> uh, no, I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave my house. Yeah. That was uh, that hurricane uh, and then blizzard thing <laughs> yeah. hit, hit pretty good around my neck of the woods. I didn't get flooded, which was good. Right. But uh, power was out for about 11 days. And I d people were like bitching. They're like... Oh, Anthony, what are you bitching about? Uh, uh, you're always saying how, you know, you can survive the apocalypse. You're all prepared, this. But this, uh, you know, power out for 11 days and you're pissed? I'm like, I don't need the gray area of of having to survive. I want either electricity and luxury and everything mm. I do in life, or I want to be allowed to kill people. Right. One or the other. I don't want my power out, but down the street everything's hunky-dory. <laughs> I can't ravage them uh, <laughs> for their food and sexual favors from their daughter at gunpoint uh, when the lights are coming on in an hour. 
<laughs> it would be great if one guy just decided it was the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> couple, couple hours in. Right, he just loses <laughs> all patience after two hours. <laughs> Oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, there's my car. All, All right, right uh, Talk to you later, buddy. Take it easy. Great seeing See you. Ya. Ya. Uh, love you guys. I love you too, buddy. That's like a treat to have that. That's that's radio. Uh, radio is walking out the door oh, right now. Ow. There he goes. Uh, and when I say radio, I mean that black retarded oh, kid. <laughs> we thought he was the talking to the in a bank roll. There we go. Oh, <laughs> But then I can't take my gun to Atlantic City. Uh oh. Jersey, you know. That's the time to hit him. He's got money yeah, and no gun. <laughs> well, the guy I'm going with has a gun, so leave me alone. Take it easy, buddy. Take it easy. Yeah. Uh, oh. It's nice. He's going to Atlantic City to stay in his suite, and he's got all of his fucking clothes <laughs> in a backpack. Two backpacks. Two backpacks. But like, not even like a uh, the double backpack. It looks like a twelve-year-old. <laughs> like, don't worry about me, mom. I'm going to Atlantic City. God, that fucking man's funny.